everybody, it's Mr. Gordon back with you for a, uh, another week of pre-algebra on BCPS TV. These lessons are for the week of June 1st and lesson one is on rotations. Our lesson one objective is for students to describe the properties of rotations and the effects on a geometric figure in the coordinate plane. All right, so let's look at some key vocabulary for this lesson. So our first word is a rotation. A rotation is a transformation in which a figure is turned around a point. So if you think about uh, last week, we had reflections that were flipped and translations that were slid. A rotation is turned around a point. That point is called the center of rotation. So a reflection had a line of reflection, a uh, rotation is going to have a center of rotation, which is a point about which a figure is rotated. And these are all rigid transformations. A rigid transformation is when we can have a change in the position or orientation, but we do not change the shape or size. Therefore, after the transformation, these shapes stay congruent. All right, in order to fully understand rotations, you need to know the difference between clockwise and counterclockwise. So this diagram should help. Just a reminder, clockwise uh, will move in the direction of a clock and counterclockwise will go in the opposite direction in which a clock turns. Okay, so what we have here is an example um, of some rotations. Uh, I'll give you about 20 seconds. Take a look and just kind of notice some things uh, about this graph. All right, so here's some things you may have noticed. Uh, first of all, all the shapes are triangles that are the same size and same shape. So all these triangles have remained congruent. The triangles have the same orientation. So if I start, for example, with the letter C and I go clockwise, I always go C, B, A. So they've kept the same orientation. The arrangement of letters have not changed. The triangles have been rotated around the graph. Uh, you may have noticed the image was actually rotated three times and they were rotated counterclockwise. In this case, the center of rotation is the origin. And you may have also noticed some things about how the triangles are named. So we have triangle ABC. And if you notice in the second quadrant, we have triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. In the third quadrant, we would read this as A double prime, B double prime, C double prime, because that's the second time it was rotated. And in the fourth quadrant, we actually have A triple prime, B triple prime, and C triple prime, which would indicate that fourth triangle was the third rotation from the first triangle, which was the pre-image. Okay, so let's take a closer look at these and uh, dive a little deeper into the vocabulary. So, the first thing we had was triangle one is the pre-image. We know that because there's no prime notation for that triangle. It's just A, B, C. Triangle two, we would say, has been rotated 90 degrees. And as we mentioned, we're rotating counterclockwise. We're going the opposite direction of the clock. Triangle three has been rotated 180 degrees. And triangle four has been rotated 270 degrees. So let's get an understanding of these rotations. So if you take a look, we said the origin was the center of rotation. So if I draw a line from point A to the origin, and then from the origin to A prime, I actually make a right angle if I do that. If I go from A to the origin, and then from A to a double prime, I make a straight line, and that's 180 degrees. So by creating a line from the vertices to the center of uh, rotation, you'll actually create the angle in which the graph turns. Uh, that's why we would say triangle two is a 90 degree rotation, and triangle three is a 180 degree rotation. 
All right, let's see if you can show what you know. So we're looking at these figures on the coordinate plane to the right. Triangle A, which is the purple triangle, is the pre-image. Triangle Z, O, and B have been rotated clockwise around the origin. So I'm going to give you about 30 seconds. So I want you to think if we're at triangle A and we're going to triangle O, how many degrees have we rotated triangle A? And you'll do that for triangle O, triangle B, and triangle Z. So I'll give you about 30 seconds. Okay, so going clockwise, so I'm going to start at A. I'm going to go in this direction, triangle A, and I'm rotating clockwise. So triangle O would have been rotated 180 degrees. Triangle B would have been rotated 270 degrees. And triangle Z would have been rotated 90 degrees. All these rotations again were around the origin and we were rotating clockwise. All right, so let's take a close look at rotations on the coordinate plane. Uh, we're gonna do a little 20 second of what do you notice here. Uh, you have two diagrams and I want you to try to make a little sense of this before I start talking about what you're looking at. So 20 seconds, what do you notice in these two graphs? Okay, so in the first graph, in blue, you have a 270 degrees clockwise turn. And in red, you have a 90, excuse me, you have a 270 degrees counterclockwise turn in blue. In red, you have a 90 degree clockwise turn. If you notice, both of those turns end up in the same exact location. All right, so rotating 270 degrees counterclockwise is the same as rotating 90 degrees clockwise. If you notice in the second graph, we have A and A prime. They're in the same exact spot. So therefore, anytime we rotate 360 degrees in either direction, it'll give you two images in the exact same location. All right, so let's bring back the original diagram we looked at of the four triangles being rotated. Uh, we're going to look a little closer at how these points change as we actually rotate them. So as you see here in my charts in blue, I have the coordinates of the pre-image. So A was 1, 1, B was 3, 1, and C was 1, 5. They are going to be your uh, coordinates for your purple triangle. And I've also included the coordinates after each rotation. So over here to the right, you'll see... Uh, triangle A prime, B prime, C prime after a 90 degree rotation. A double prime, B double prime, C double prime after 180 degree rotation. And then our triple primes after a 270 degree rotation. I want you to look closely at the numbers you see in these ordered pairs. And what do you notice about every number in relation to the preimage? So something hopefully you notice is that every coordinate in some way, shape, or forms involve the digits 1, 3, and 5. So as I rotate the shape, I have to be a part of the same digits that the original pre-image were uh, graphed on. So if you notice, I went... In the pre-image, 1, 1, after 9 degrees, I went negative 1, 1. For B, I was at 3, 1, and then I went negative 1, 3. So those, they might be opposites, and they might change location, but the actual digits are the same. 
So I went from 1, 5 to negative 5, 1. All right, and every one of these will follow some sort of pattern as you rotate around. And I'm going to share those patterns with you coming up. Okay, so here's a table that shares the relation from the pre-image to the image. So if you take a look, remember 90 degrees clockwise and 270 degrees counterclockwise, that's what the CCW represents, end up in the same exact location. So going 90 degrees clockwise or 270 degrees counterclockwise, if the pre-image is XY, then the point on the image is Y negative X. So again, the digits are gonna be the same, but they might reverse location, meaning X becomes Y, Y becomes X, or they may become opposite. 180 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise is XY becomes negative X, negative Y, and 270 degrees clockwise and 90 degrees counterclockwise goes from X, Y, to negative Y, X. So I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds here to 45 seconds to look at this chart and see if you can answer a couple of these questions. We'll do the first one together uh, since this is kind of new. So if vertex A is graphed at two, three, it has been rotated 90 degrees clockwise. We wanna know the coordinates for A prime. So I'm gonna look and I'm gonna see 90 degrees clockwise. So I'm gonna look right here on my table and I'm gonna see X, Y, so two, three, becomes Y, negative X. So that means if three is the Y value in the pre-image, it's now going to be the X value in the image. And then if X was two, Y now becomes negative X, so it's now gonna become three, negative two. So I'll give you about 30 seconds, and then I want you to try the next two. Okay, so vertex B, negative 4, 1 has been rotated 180 degrees counterclockwise. So I'm going to go here on my table, and I'm going to see X, Y becomes negative X, negative Y. So this is kind of the easiest one to do because everything just becomes its opposite. So negative 4, 1 should become 4, negative 1. All right, and then in my last one, Vertex C, negative five, negative, negative six, has been rotated 270 degrees clockwise. So I'm gonna go here on my table, and I'm gonna see X, Y becomes negative Y, X. So that means if I have negative five, negative six, I'm now gonna have positive six, negative five. Our second lesson for the week of June 1st, is on dilations. Our last objective is for students to describe the properties of dilations and the effects on a geometric figure in the coordinate plane. All right, so the key vocabulary for this part of the lesson, uh, the first one is a dilation. A dilation is a transformation that enlarges or reduces a figure using a proportion or a scale. Uh, so for me, when I think about my transformations, we have rotations, reflections, translations. They do not change size or shape. However, a dilation enlarges or reduces a figure. So now our figures are no longer staying congruent. One way you can uh, change a size of a shape is to enlarge it, and that's enlargement, and we increase the size. Another way is a reduction, and that's when you decrease the size. Uh, you increase and decrease using a scale factor, and that's a ratio. So you got to think multiplication, you got to think fractions, um, you got to think proportional relationships. And then uh, when we 
create or use or do a dilation, we end up with uh, something called similar figures. So before we had congruent figures, now we have similar figures. Similar figures are going to be the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. Okay, so here's our first example of a dilation. Uh, we are using a scale factor uh, of 2 to uh, enlarge triangle ABC to triangle DEF. And if you look, uh, the, the side lengths for triangle ABC are 8, 9, and 6. And when we use our scale factor of 2 to create our enlargement, they now become 16, 18, and 12. So by multiplying each side length by 2, I have enlarged this figure and I have created similar figures. So note that they are the same shape, but they are different sizes. All right, so let's look at these uh, quadrilaterals. So we have quadrilateral W, X, Y, Z, and we are actually going to use a scale factor of one fourth to create quadrilateral A, B, C, D. Uh, if we're multiplying by a number less than one, so if our scale factor is less than one, a proper fraction, we are actually going to reduce the size of that image. So by multiplying each side length by one fourth, so 16 times one fourth is four, 20 times one fourth is five, I've actually created dilation that is a reduction and I've reduced the size of that quadrilateral. Again, they've kept their same shape, but they've changed size. All right, so let's see if you can show what you know here. So we're looking for the scale factor for each dilation. And uh, in the first one, we're going uh, trapezoid E, F, G, H to J, K, L, M. And then the second one, we're doing triangle D, E, F to triangle A, B, C. I'll give you a couple of seconds here to think through and see if you can come up with the scale factor. Okay, because I'm going from the smaller trapezoid to the larger one, uh, my scale factor is going to be two as I'm doubling each side length. And in the second one, I'm going from the larger triangle to the smaller one. So it's important to realize the scale factor is not three. That's if I'm enlarging the shape and I'm going from the smaller triangle to the bigger. Instead, the scale factor is going to be one third uh, because 27 times one third is nine. All right, so let's look at this uh, dilation on the coordinate plane. So I have quadrilateral ABCD in blue, and it's dilated to form uh, A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime there in uh, green. All right, so if we look at the ordered pairs for our pre-image, we have negative 2, 5, 4, 2, 4, negative 4, and negative 4, negative 4. The coordinates for our image are... Uh, negative 1, 2 and a half, 2, 1, 2, negative 2, and negative 2, negative 2. So without knowing the side lengths, I can still actually figure out the scale factor by examining the coordinates. So I want you to take a second. I want you to look at uh, the coordinates of the pre-image in blue and the coordinates of the image. And what do you notice about the coordinates? Try to complete this sentence. I'll give you about 15 seconds. All right, so hopefully you notice that each coordinate of the image over here in green is one half the coordinates of the pre-image. So because of that, we can say the scale factor is one half. All right, time to show what you know. So triangle ABC has been dilated by a scale factor of two. We need the coordinates of triangle a prime, B prime, and C prime.
All right, in order to do this, since my scale factor is two, I'm gonna simply multiply each coordinate by two or double each coordinate. So if I have a negative two, I'm now at negative four, four. Uh, B is two, one, so B prime is gonna be four, two. And C prime is negative one, or C is negative one, so C prime would be negative two. And negative two would become negative four. Since my scale factor is larger than one, this is an enlargement in terms of the dilation. All right, so until next time, let's remember that uh, rotations move points around a center of rotation and they remain congruent. So just like a translation and a reflection, rotations are example of a rigid transformation. Uh, dilation will enlarge or reduce an image using a scale factor. They do not remain congruent, however, they become similar. So uh, until next time, uh, be safe and be good.